you have the sound in the six string uh, uh, song. You can see the the primer has done its job. It's, it's lumpy, but that's fine. Some keying work to do. Get these lines, pristine edges done. Um, we passed the chemical bond um, window that you have with primers to base colors, but that's okay. We just wanted to, I wanted to do this first to see what sort of solution we had on the side, you know, how much, how much shape difference did we have here with, there's a lot of repair work on this side, if you remember. So now what we'll do is once it's keyed back, that'll be enough grip for the next primer load, which will be much, much thinner uh, to go onto this. Um, I will decide obviously, depending on if I break through the primer at any point, which I most likely will do, it will have a primer coat reapplied and then we'll get onto base colors. Sometimes, depending on the surface, I'll use a rubber block. Other times, I need my fingers to feel edges. Uh, but whatever, we get down. We don't try and break through. We don't want to break through the primer. Let's hope we don't have to do any more sanding. It'll be a very, very high thinness based primer, which will be, which means it'll be quite shiny and almost like a, a white finished paint. So um, yeah, looking forward to seeing that. I think this is how they did it at Honda. Right. <laughs> you can see here what we're trying to uh, eliminate in the next phase of spraying is to uh, get rid of these uh, decal lumps that look like decal lumps although this has been sprayed on um, we're going to achieve a smooth gloss finish because we think it just looks so much better obviously that's not possible when you're manufacturing a, f um, a panel like this can you imagine having to spray to that degree to get um, the decals thing. so we we're as consumers we accept these things but you, once you see one that's done the way that the designer would have liked to have seen it, then that's a whole different story. So let's have a look and see whether you feel that this is um, nice like this with the, with the bumps or whether it's gloss finished and you can see no re, um, relief on there, which one is nicer. So now we're removing just the edge, the extra paint outside of the stencil. So basically it will help us when we remove the, the stencil itself. So we are not going to leave any flaky edge or anything. It's easier to clean it now than later. So now I've put the panels on uh, to check. We haven't put the final lacquer layer on, but I just wanted to check this color. Uh, and I think you'll agree. Hopefully this is showing up. I think you'll agree this is a far nicer red it just it just uh, pops last series of components to be sprayed uh, the tank um, that tank had some dents in it which uh, if you haven't seen that video on how to take a dent out uh, it's come out really well uh, these are the VFR panels for I'm not sure which of the two VFRs, 
It is, but um, they, the panels are numbered. There's the modified tailpiece. As you can see, it's nice and clean. The curve is correct. So that'll look nice on the bike. I know there were just one or two comments about cutting this back piece, which uh, seemed to irk a few people. But I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I would have done this anyway on the Honda, just to save you having to take the those pillion handles off on and off the whole time. It's a very easy solution to do that. And let's be honest, the bike looks really nice with that extra detail on the rear. Now, I think it's missing without it. But anyway, that's just my opinion. And, uh, Okay, it's now spraying. You can see we made the, the um, stand for it in this particular case. This spray booth is too small for the work that we're doing in here. Um, so we're going to move to another spray booth which we have in the next building. If you see now, it's like very flat. You see? You remember that those ones, they oh, haven't wow. been laggered yet. You can't feel anything now. No. So, so now, you're going to lacquer that now? Yep. And then we will polish on the top of that. So you don't have enough lacquer on there to take a chance? Not really. Because you remember last day when I was putting clear coat in this one, it was 39 degrees on the boot. <laughs> so it's a hot day. Forget it. I couldn't put like more than two coats. For most respray places, this would be good enough. Now I know this VFR doesn't justify uh, the, the amount of effort we're putting into, but this is not the point. The point is to show you just how much effort we go into some of the custom resprays that we do for the high-end bikes, the really high-value items. It's not only motorcycles, it can be uh, historic cars with um, maybe some corrosion on the corner where you want to keep the rest of the, the bodywork as, uh, as original as possible. We'll do a, a key and I'll show you how we do restoration work on items. Um, so this is a totally different thing. This is, a, this is going to be a mirror finish um, polished it to show you what we can do with custom resprays but for high-end cars we want uh, certain components done like internal carbon fiber bits this is the what we what i'm talking about is just how high a finish we will achieve here before we let it out what do we got here well same stuff um this side. spray two coats of clear coat and then next day we will just level it and then we will spray the last coat just to make sure that everything looks lovely. I mean, there you got a decal that's, it's actually not a decal, it's been sprayed. hand sprayed. So all these stencils are cut, masks are cut, all those letters are weeded out. Now it's not to say that if we did replacement parts on motorcycles that have decals, which have got lumps on them, we'll quite happily do those restorations as they are because they would, they would look wrong if we did them the way we're doing this one because it would just be out of place it wouldn't fit with say the tank or whatever component you've got on the bike that's original what are you doing on this one okay just the greasing i mean it's done i finished with the sanding but someone came here to interrupt me and i left all the powder on the top okay i'm so going i'm going see look see slowly going going if you were here to feel this this is the matte finish right this is just next level smooth. Oh, and the tank is ready for polishing. So see what, uh, what we've done is literally just get everything flush level. So there's no bumps at all, nothing. No deform deformations or marks or anything. So this will polish up a little bit like this one. This is where we're heading with this, with this restoration. That is just stunning. So we've still got to do this bit here. So this is all, all polished with that. This is the kind of finish you're looking at. It's just. I can see a little bit of lines there still. So I'm gonna go for a quick one. I don't need to use a lot of products and make everything work.
Wow. Oh, that's glorious, eh? So, okay, a lot of people are asking about the color that we used on this one, whether it was a Ferrari color or uh, a Rossa color from Italy. It was a handmade color, basically, and we mixed a bright red from Honda uh, with 25% of um, Lumo Red, which is one of these kind of um, very, very bright red that we've got out there. Okay. So it's not something you can just get out of a tin? No, no, no. no. Okay. It has been mixed. I think that the bright red was not bright enough, so we just decided to add a little bit more of brightness, so we decided to add that little bit of percent. Okay. Look at the what you mean by the mixing up a paint, because they look very, they look the same. Yeah, in here it looks very similar. You can see it in here, I hope. I mean, it's very subtle, but that one looks to be brighter. Just ever so much brighter. Yeah. Just pops a little bit. I, Not much, but... I think that the, the phone, it doesn't really say anything. That's the darker one. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, look, there. Yeah, it's just there. depending on the reflection. Yeah, but... it's darker. Yeah. Okay, the second VFR, we just... Uh, Checking to see these panels work. Now remember in restoration, you've got um, a different set of skills that you have to apply. For us, we treat high quality restorations or high value items um, by putting in the original patina on the original paint. Now what I mean by that is that Instead of painting the whole surface again, because color matching is almost impossible, we will find a color match. We can do this because we do this with bicycles every day and we have to get those absolutely right. So to do a car panel of say a 1960 Miura or something like that, uh, for us it can be anything out of the ordinary. But I think we've got to go a step further here and we have to, once you've polished, imagine you've polished a, a lacquer coat, an original lacquer coat that's that old, 50 years old. We have to apply the new lacquer coat only to the area of the restoration. Otherwise that panel's no longer original and the values and the originality of the, of the item. So we have all sorts of dissolvers and blenders that blend in the lacquers into the old lacquer, but then applying patina back in is also a skill. It's a, it really is just a, a fine art painting restoration exercise, except it's on a, on a car or a motorcycle panel. It makes no difference. But I think this is where, in my opinion, where restoration is going. It's no longer a case of just taking off all the parts, either replacing a lot of it with new or better parts, but restoring those old parts, but then putting back the character for the period. Uh, by keeping much of it as original and any, of course, any changes that you make to that uh, to that panel or whatever it is, is going to have to be blended in with the original. But really it is, it is a very sympathetic restoration process that I'm talking about. Um, and I welcome anybody uh, to come and chat about whatever they think they might want to do to their bonnet. Now bear in mind we can't have whole cars in here that we don't have the, the, the size of for that but we can do interior components veneer fixes um, obviously body paintwork like if you set that drop a bonnet or a door or something that's no problem we can handle that but yeah just come come and chat see if we can uh, if we can help you Right, let's try this silicon specialist on this rather tired inner cover.
Right, we're gonna have a go at spraying the casing because the casing is right visibly. Uh, you can see the line here. I bought this stuff being told that this is the closely matching paint. So take a note of that and uh, we'll see at the end what this looks like. Code one. Well, they, they taught us at Berkeley School of Music never to stay on a suscord too long and never to go from a suscord to a suscord. Well, the suscord to me is a chord of inquiry. It's, a, it, it's an unresolved chord with a question mark in it. And compliments that I've really enjoyed, you know, that I've been received, you know, they humble me. The point of view. Uh, uh. Your views on the failure of the baby boomers. Okay. 
We were raised on Disney. Someday my parents will come. A lot of fairy movie. We came up in affluence. Unprecedented. Not that we were greatly wealthy, but we all had houses. You know, they were mortgaged. Our parents, our mothers had bought into the white picket fence, you know, like half of that dream was vague, it, you know, but, but the wives were unhappy. The, the, the home contained these, un, for the most part, you know, unhappy women. Tell you now, the VFR is now done. Now you're not going to believe what's just happened. This is just... <laughs> I just... Uh, yeah, you can't make this up. Alright, I'm positioning the bike to get the light on the exhaust pipe side and I put the kickstand down and you can see there's a drain here. It's a slight decline. Yes folks, I dropped it. And I'll damage this side. Ah, scratch that. Lovely paintwork of our case. That could have been worse. Oh man. I could cry. I could cry. Still, I get it painted again. But man, that's a shocker. I'm going home.